Welcome into the Texags Rewind presented by T-Mobile. Dalton Hughes here. Nuno's not hosting, but Nuno's on the Rewind. Uh, David called in. He's sick of missing work, he says. He wanted to talk about the College World Series. AM headed to Omaha and more. We did that. Uh, after that, we heard from J.B. Moss on AM headed to the College World Series. Former player fired up for the program and where it is, and he wanted to talk about it with us. Jason Howe joined for Recruiting Country here inside the studio. And then to close things out, one of the more interesting stories of the morning, PhoneGate 2022, where is Olin Buchanan's phone? It's the Tex-Ags Rewind. Uh, but my goal is to leave here on Saturday morning, so I will be in the chair on Monday morning to uh, hopefully talk about a couple Ag- Aggie victories. In the College World Series, and that is why Mr. Nuno is not happy. There, that's the only reason he wishes he was here right now. David, your perspective on this team, Super Regional win. They're going to Omaha in the first year of Coach Schlossnagel. I mean, what a ride this has been. So one of the things that we've talked about, and the first one to talk about it on the show was Jim Schlossnagel himself, and, and Bronny has brought it up, the grit of this team. Like, when you look at the way they have won in just this past weekend at the Super Regional and really all season long, there's not one way that they win, right? They win with offense. Uh, this past weekend, they won one-run games. They won with walk-offs. They won with solid relief pitching. The bullpen, like, they, they won with, with your – core part of your lineup, not really producing the numbers that we're used to doing. This team just finds a way to win, win, win. And it's so much fun to watch them out there. Um, you know, one of the things that I have taken so much delight from is every one of these players has a story that maybe we didn't know before because a lot of them were brand new. And some of them just were not really known players and how they have developed into these stories. We have followed Targotch's rise this season. We have followed Trevor Werner from being a stud to being out to kind of growing back into that role. Dylan Rock growing into the, the rock star role that we keep giving him. Um, Jack Moss batting 400. Like we knew he was going to be good. Did we know he was going to be this good and to be this consistent for this long? Um, and Jim Schlossnagel, you know, just over, what was it, 53 weeks ago he was hired. And this is what we signed up for. And I know many people thought it was possible eventually, right? Like what they're doing. He did it in friggin' year one. The Aggies are in the College World Series. Uh, this guy has won, what, 11 games as a coach in the College World Series. You've got the right head coach, the right players, and the right makeup to make it. They've already made a deep run. Let's go even deeper. And I do want to say this. It, it's, you know, I'm out of town following every pitch, every at-bat. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the walk-off victory was very late at night, amazing. And the next day, people at the soccer tournament on that were talking about it, not even real college or Aggie baseball fans. Then uh, when the Aggies won, I was in the middle of a game watching on, on, my, on my phone, and my kids are playing, and I heard a big, yeah, and it was uh, Gareth Flick who runs the, uh, the tournament that we were at. An Aggie came up to me and talked about, did you just see what they did? It was, it was cool to see that, like, even, you know, in, on the East Coast, coast of the united states i'm over there hearing aggie love from uh, all the fans out there you you tweeted saturday afternoon and you said something that i think rings pretty true about this program where it's going and where it's been and you said a&m baseball heading to omaha where this program belongs what was your feeling like as a former player and seeing this uh all this happening this season uh saturday after that clincher against louisville well, I was just so proud of them. Um, you know, and I have really high expectations for Texas A&M baseball. Uh, to be honest with you, I have high expectations for all the athletic teams um, under Texas A&M athletics. And, and I just feel like, you know, a top eight program is, is where we belong. And, you know, I'm just so, so proud of the guys. And, and what they're doing in year one is just remarkable. I mean, I think it's going to be really hard for us to look back in the history books and find any program in any sport that finishes inside the top eight with a first year head coach. I mean, it's just so rare what they're doing. And um, I just couldn't be more excited about the future and the trajectory of Texas A&M baseball and Texas A&M athletics as a whole. It's just a great time for Aggie sports. JB, I remember sitting with you back. I think it, I think we were texting probably in like January, February. And we're talking like, man, excited to get down for a game. But I don't really want to know where, what we're going to see. Let's talk about the team that we saw opening weekend, first couple of weeks, Frisco, to where they are now. 
and what that speaks to the coaching's job that Coach Slosnagel's done. Well, I think early in the season, uh, February, March, you saw a team that was just a step slow, maybe a little unsure of themselves, maybe still trying to feel out the staff and feel out each other and just trying to mesh. Um, you know, I think whether you look in college football or baseball, you know, I think it just takes a little bit of time. and I think it's important to be patient um, with young kids. I mean, look at Texas A&M Texas basketball, you know, just, Sometimes it takes a little longer for the guys to mesh. And, and like you said, it just points to the consistency of the message coming from the head coach down. And I think when you're consistent with your message and you're consistent with your belief in the kids and you're consistent in the work that you put in, I think great things, are, great things happen. And I think that's what we're, we're seeing this time of year. You know, some guy told Nuno, hey, it's the first road weekend series in the SEC. The Aggies are going to Alex Box. We should get someone on the show that's played there and talk about, you know, what a road trip does for bonding a team. You remember who that guy was? I believe it was J.B. Moss. It was J.B. Moss. So when you look at this team and how they've built, <laughs> that, that camaraderie, you see that on the field from these guys, right? Like you can tell they love playing for each other and they also love playing for this school. That's right. I mean, you can just, I mean, they, it just oozes out of them. I mean, you can just, you can tell that they are passionate about the 12th man. They're passionate about the fan base. They're passionate about Texas A&M. And I think they're passionate about their head coach. You know, I, I've mentioned before that we're not pri privileged enough to see all the behind the scenes stuff, but I do think that, you know, from what I hear, Slosh is hard on them. And I think the staff works them pretty hard, but I think that creates a level of respect. Um, because all he's trying to do is get the best out of him. And it's hard not to believe in him. I mean, look at his track record and look at his past and what he did at TCU. And, you know, I, I just think it's the perfect balance of hard work, belief, and just togetherness. And, um, you know, I'm just so proud of the guys. Jason, you mentioned camp last week. Let's start here. Give me one name. If I made you pick last, last uh, uh, from last week, give me one camper that stood out to you. Oh man, um, I'm gonna go with Freddie Dubose. Okay, um, he uh, he's a guy that was on my radar. I, I knew him as more of a track guy. He had some real big times out there. Um, I had never seen him in person, so uh, getting a chance to see him in person, do his work, and he really lit it up. Walked home with the offer, uh, but uh, yeah, 2024 receiver uh, Freddie Dubose uh, definitely caught my attention. That's Jason Howell's week one standout player. Also, a good time to remind you, if you've got any questions for Howell, you can text us in on the A&B text line, 979-693-1150. Some other big names that I know came to town and you talked to. Let's go bullet by bullet here. Okay. I wanted the Jason Howell radio edition <laughs> update. Let's start with Sidier Mitchell. Well, um, he's uh, he took a visit to Miami last weekend. Uh, he was in College Station the weekend before has already taken an official visit to uh, to Georgia as well. Georgia and A&M were kind of the, the top schools, uh, you know, thought to be kind of at the at the lead. And I know A&M put their best foot forward and, and was right there. Uh, I would say coming out of the visit, Georgia was the main competition. Um, and I, I, as he kind of gears towards what looks like a summertime decision, I, I look for A&M to be – you know, right there at the very top of his list. So um, it's I'm talking one or two. Uh, so he, I, I look for them to be right there in contention for his commitment. See another one of those names that we keep talking about. It's just great D line talent that they keep going after. Yeah, and he's different. He's I mean, this is a kid that's I don't know six five two or three <laughs> three thirty or whatever. He's he's just uh, he's a he's a guy that can be uh, your true nose. But he's also he's athletic enough to be be a three technique at that size, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's uh, he's a special type of talent, and um, yeah, A and M's put themselves in great position. Elijah Robinson's been leading that recruitment for a long time. 
always you can never have enough diverse defensive linemen if you ask me how about let this let's get closer to home a guy that was here on an unofficial visit last week Longview wide receiver Jalen Hale yeah and I think he went to he's he went to USC last weekend right okay. after that visit um, but um, yeah uh, he he just decided to stop through it's been a while since he'd been to college station he felt so he wanted to drop in and he's planning to get back I think for the pool party so um yeah he, he made a real quick stop but uh you know just kind of getting back around the coaches and and uh you know getting a feel for college station again no red dirt any interesting stories from the road so far that's a quite the motley crew you're traveling with yeah not, not really you know uh, the, i think the biggest the, the i forgot my phone yeah and uh i thought i left it in my truck so irma drove up and uh, found out that it wasn't in my truck, so I must have left it at home because I was up, up at three o'clock and I wasn't thinking clearly. You did not have your so, uh, your faculties I, all there. I didn't, and I used my phone, of course, with my uh, as my tape recorder as well. But uh, fortunately, you know, this is a big event, so they'll have people uh, provide the quotes for us if I can't get my phone. But the plan is to send it to get it over when they find it to get it over to. Thomas Dick with the Texas a and Sports Information Department, and then you know he'll fly it up. It might, it might get to Omaha before I do. That would be uh, that's quite the man. I would trust Thomas with my life. Hopefully, Thomas delivers you a soft pretzel when he delivers you your phone. He's a big fan of soft pretzels. Well, I'll just, yeah, and I'll settle for the phone. <laughs> that's for sure for right now. Can you provide an update first? Where are you guys at, and how's the road trip going? Okay, so location, we are coming into Wichita, Kansas. Oh, shout out uh, P.Y. So that, yeah, shout out to P.Y., Wichita State, of course. a and played Wichita State earlier this baseball season. Didn't go well, but that's an entire turnaround ago. But, yeah, I think that's about five and a half or four and a half hours until we get to Omaha, Nebraska. Wow, so you're more than halfway there. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as how the road trip's going, uh, it's going much better than it was at three thirty, three forty-five in the morning when Olin thought he didn't have his phone. I can get, I can confirm that. So for those that don't follow you on Twitter, because we know you really don't have that many followers on Twitter, and I refuse to give you a retweet from the Texas account, d- describe to us what happened. With I can phone, rectify that with phone with phone gate. What happened? Phone gate. So around we were driving into uh, Hearn. And Olin realized he didn't have his phone, or he thought he didn't have his phone. Checks all his pockets, checks his backpack, can't find it. We send Irma a text from Ronnie's phone to look for it, go check the go check the truck when she gets up. She can't find it. We had already devised this whole plan that it was going to get sent on the A&M team plane with Thomas Dick, the SID, but obviously that went out the window. And then we get to a Love's Travel Stop in Guthrie, Oklahoma, Olin checks his suitcase, not there. I decided to go check the shotgun seat where Olin's riding right now. He's listening to every word I say. And uh, in between the console and his seat, there is his cell phone. He had it the entire time. Incredible. That's making me smile more than you can probably imagine. My money was on the suitcase. He he doubled over laughing (laughs) in the gas station parking lot. It was one of the most hysterical things I've ever witnessed. Delirious laughing from this old man in the parking lot. I'm sure you guys got quite the look. Well, you're in Oklahoma. It was pretty normal. It was pretty normal for a Guthrie, Oklahoma, I'm sure. That'll do it for the Rewind on a Wednesday morning. We'll be back tomorrow, but after you watch this video, like, share, comment, subscribe, send it to your friends, do all that stuff. It's Tex Ags Rewind.